feel me? Sometimes you got to put your hands on a bitch and let a bitch know that you ain't going to play with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we all out here taking penitentiary oh, chances for this shit. You so got to pay me to look at this, man. You got to pay me to look at this. You know what I'm saying? Like this. in jail. So if this that's is... what we going to do and that's the role, that, that's, that's like more than a 50% chance of the role, then yeah, bitch don't play. You feel me? You're going to have to put your hands on a bitch. So it's like... The best things to do is to have you a white bitch, you feel me? If you have you a white bitch or an Asian bitch, she, a bitch that's not black. If you have you a bitch that's not black, I promise you, you ain't gonna have to put your hands on her and she gonna bring you a little bit of more money. You know what I'm saying? When you're dealing with black bitches, African Americans, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to put your hands on them and intimidate them. And that's just because where we come from, you feel me? It's like, and due to the circumstances and situations that I'm pimping you home in, I know you a real bitch and you know I'm a real nigga. So some shit, some shit a black man ain't gonna be, some shit a black man can't tell no black bitch, you feel me? Like, when you, you can tell a white bitch like, look, go yeah. walk the blade with no shoes on, bitch, you fucked up. Press you feel me? Give me your shoes. You can go on there. What, what do you guys think of that? That's a new era? <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a gorilla pimp. Yeah, that's some other shit. That's a gorilla yeah, pimp. That's just some that's other. That's a gorilla pimp. That's a game that's you guys never. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, uh, that's not where I come from. You your, your game had much more class and style and respect. Well, you know, I'm a gentleman. Before anything, I was raised by my mother. You know what I'm saying? She didn't teach me to, you know, physically abuse people because that sounds like abuse to me. Now, don't get me wrong. When somebody get online, you may have to. You know, do something, but no, not like that, to me. Yeah. To me, I don't know about him. What do you make of that, DC? It's just, it was all over the place, to be honest, you know. The game is- Well, he was all over the place, because he was whole, swiggling. Oh, that was all over. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, the relationship, I've, I've talked to a lot of pimps now, a lot of girls that have had pimps, and it seems like a lot of the females want, they seek out a pimp, they want that relationship. It's not like the pimp is making them do it. They're, they're, they, they, they sook out these guys and, and said, hey, I want you to be my pimp. Well, let me tell you, since the beginning of the time, a lot of women associate and get hit with love. So that would be that type of woman. You know what I mean? Because if I can't talk to you and we can't come to a mutual understanding of conversation, you need to go. Because you can have me put in jail. And I'm not going to jail for you. No money, nothing. So that's why I stand with that. And that's just me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Gino and DC. Yeah. You guys, yes. you guys grew up where? You're from LA? I yeah. was born and raised here in LA, yes. And DC, where are you from? LA, born and raised. <laughs> and the neighborhoods you guys grew up in was were there pimps when you guys grew up? You're both older gentlemen, so I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wondering how the game has, has well, developed and changed over the years. I can speak on me. You know, um, I was brought up in this. My father was in the life. My uncles kind of ran this city of L.A. back in the 60s and the 70s. They were very prominent people. So this was the only thing I knew. I, I didn't see nothing else but that. I saw my daddy and his friends which I consider my, call my uncles today. They had the big fancy cars and all that stuff. And um, it inspired me to be in the game. So that's how I really- then, what, what year was this, when you were a teenager? Shit, no, nah, man, I saw this from a kid, like six years old, and wait, seven what, years what old. What year was this? 1966. 66? Yeah, we moved to the west side in 66. I came from the east side and we moved to the west side in 66. And um, I went to good schools. You know, I didn't have to take this, this, this lane that I took. I just did it because it was what I wanted. So um, that's how I really got into it. And that was, like I said, that was in 1966. You know, I saw the Cadillacs, the jewelry, and the, the, the money, the girls, I saw all that. So, you know. And do you see the role, role models you had growing up were similar? Well, you could say, for the most part, you know, um, yeah, you know, I grew up 
on the same side of town on the west side. So it was the same thing going on over there. Do you think the, the, the pimp prostitute thing has gone on for as long as man has been around or? Oh, for sure. Yeah. In some form? Yeah. In they say the oldest yes. profession, so. Yeah. Yeah. How, is it, how has it changed over the years? Oh, we, golly. I mean, it, it took a shit a 180. You know, it's, it's not the same today with all this um, new internet stuff and the laws changed. So that makes a, a, a lot different, you know? Much harder to... Yeah, it's like, you know, I wouldn't advise nobody to do this. Nobody. I mean, you know, if you want to go to prison for the rest of your life, I decided one day I was sitting in jail and I decided I was a bad criminal. So I changed my life. I said, well, if I get caught 33 times doing all different type of stuff, I'm a, this ain't working for me. I'm a bad criminal. So I came home and uh, I changed my life. So you're no longer doing it? You're no, I'm no longer in, in, in anything illegal. You're, you're a respectable business. But I'm still in the light because the life is life. It's just I'm playing in a different field. You, you There's understand? nothing you're doing that's that's going to no, be No, nothing jail. illegal. Not, nothing illegal. I'm a I'm a fashion designer. Um, I do events. You know what I'm saying? I'm um, I give three big events a year. So it's nothing I do that's illegal. But it's still the knowledge that I got from coming up in the life. I just use it to what I'm doing now. And the circle of friends continues. Well, yes, yes, because I never want to forget where I came from. You know, I'm going to have love for, for, my, for, for my peers that I came up with. You know, I'll never say I'm better than you or I can't deal with you because I'm, you know, whatever. I, I don't do that. So, yeah, it's still the same. And D.C., same similar story for you. You're, you're now a respectable businessman? Yes, sir. Yes. I run a restaurant now. I've been in the business for the last four years. Simply Delicious, Southern Creole Cuisine in Mid-City, L.A. Okay. Yeah, and um, I've been doing income property for the last 20 years, 25 years also. And did your experience in the game help you guys with what you're doing today? Oh, for sure. Me. I can't speak on him, but it did with him too. I mean, I'm around him a lot. I've been knowing him since he was younger. Um, we just utilize what we learned there and put it in a legitimate form. I mean, just look, think about it, you know, think about all the people that turned their life around. That were in the game at one point in time and now they're just not, don't do it. I mean, most people my age, and I'm 60 years old, I just turned 60 last month. He's a little younger, but most people my, our age, man, uh, you'd be a fool to go out here and try to do this stuff now. How many, how many girls would you have in your stable back in the day? Well, I'm going to tell you honestly, around three. I just had three. In D.C.? Well, I had a string at one time, but setting them down all at the same time didn't kind of pan out. So i say about six, six, six five to six consistently. And these were, were African-American girls or white girls, Hispanic? It was a mix. A mix? Yeah. And, and is, is... All walks of life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Something for everybody. Yeah. And did ever, you know, I've heard some stories, and the typical stereotype of pimps is that there's intimidation and violence and all that stuff. Is that, was that well, part of your thing? Well, it's, that was there. It was a lot of that, I would say, because, you know, a lot of cats can't accept the news, you know. Uh, when they when they female chose up on them, you know, so some of them kind of had the cowboy approach. Like if you get your horse stolen, you know, you might get into a shootout. You get violent. <laughs> it's like stealing someone's horse, you know. Yeah. If they not straight laced, you know, but if they straight laced, they understand how the game goes. So the so violence was was part of the game back then. It came with the territory, yeah. you know. In prison, also. Yeah, all that goes with the territory, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, so. What was, what was the longest your girls have stayed with you? Any, any one of them, like, what, what's the longest a girl has been with you? 
Man, I just had one just leave me after seven years. <coughs> I mean, and she worked a square job and stuff, but she was really a good girl, you know what I mean? Just one day she just woke up and decided she wanted to be on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it, so I say seven years. I mean, because in, in any lifestyle, when you're dealing with women, they come and they go. They don't come to stay. I mean, they come going. So every day I used to look at this, them girls and say, man, you guys still here, are y'all crazy or is it me? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I can say seven years. What about you, D? Yeah, I mean, you know, seven, eight, nine. I mean, yeah, I, I had got decent runs, you know, five years, six years, depending over the, you know, over the decades that I was in the game, you know, each decade had I had my share of runs, mm -hmm. you know. Were you, were you guys married when you did this? Nah. No? Uh, I was. You were? Um, I, my ex-wife, the mother of my children, who I love dearly and I always will love, um, she understood my lifestyle. And you got to understand, when I did anything, I mean, because I just wasn't pimping, I was doing it all, you know what I'm saying? That's why I say I was a bad criminal, because I was getting arrested. And mm -hmm. it was like, this ain't working. You know, you get, you look up one day and you done been arrested 33 times and, you know, but she understood my lifestyle. She knew it was all just to make a better way for us to live. You're supporting the family. Exactly. And she was accepting, you know, to a certain extent, as much as a woman can be. What was, what was the arrangement with the girls? Do you keep all of the money? At, yes. Yes, what, what, when it came to that. But sometimes when they did other things, we made deals. You know what I'm saying? Because it just wasn't about that with me. You know, understand? It was, we did other things. We did jewelry. We did it all. So we had to make a deal because you want everybody to be happy. We want to cut the pie up fair. When it came to other than, you know, dealing with this pimp stuff, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Did you say the same thing? You would keep the money? I would manage the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and what you provide is security? Definitely, that came with the territory. And do, do you guys have children? You do, you do? I do, I got two children. Yeah. DC? No. No kids? Well, I have kids, but, you know. Yeah. Not coming up throughout the game. Yeah, no, but but let let's say one of your daughters or sons decided to kind of follow your footsteps and. Oh, do I don't something. think so. Uh, 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 that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know, um, it's funny you say that because I really feel fortunate because in my era, everybody was doing something illegal yeah. to make money. That was the hip, slick, cool thing to do. But none of our kids followed in our footsteps. And I think I was, had a generational curse because I followed in my grandfather's footsteps and then my father's footsteps. And um, I'm just thank God every day, you know, both my kids are grown, they're doing their own thing, they're legitimate people, they pay taxes every day, I mean every year. So you did something and, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean it's all through the grace of God. Nothing I did, you know, nothing I did. And you would have sex with your girls? Yeah. You yes. Know, yeah. That also came with the territory. <laughs> part, part of the <laughs> job. Territory, you know. DC, did, did you do uh, prison time? Well, I got caught up in some stuff, but I don't want to get into that. No problem. I won't, I won't push you. What, what are the qualities you think a pimp needs to, to, to be successful, to be a good pimp? Be true to the game, true to yourself, and straight lace with no chase. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Just be straight lace about the business. Yeah. Gino, what do you think? To me, the qualities for a good Mac, a Mac, not just a pimp, a Mac. He has to represent himself as a king. The world has to revolve around him. You're coming into my world. I'm not coming into yours. So you got to be dressed. 
you gotta, you gotta give them something that they've never seen before. When you walk in the room, the whole room should be looking at me. That's the way I dress, that's the way I feel. Because I put myself on a pedestal. So if I don't feel good about me, how am I gonna feel good about having you? The pimp, the pimp style has changed dramatically over the years. Ooh, we. <laughs> Yes. Hey, we watched the video the other day, and it was like, really? I mean, you know, I was like... Well, one, one of the videos on my channel? No, no, oh, this okay. is a video, period. Oh, yeah, was, yeah. You know, about this new wave stuff. I yeah. call it new wave. Yeah, some people it, call yeah. it like gorilla pimping and stuff like that. Yeah, well, that's been going on since the beginning of time. So we're not going to talk about it. I'm just talking about their attire. Oh, yeah. Their, the way they represent their self. Um... I thank God I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into this today, you know, because I couldn't do it. I mean, the skinny jeans and the, the real, you know, I guess the rapping really, you know, people, they want to be rappers. Yeah. Well, a lot of them come up, you know, without no good background following and then, <clears throat> you know, and um, they took all the class out the game. You know what I mean? And they think it's hip to run around with the urban clothes on and, and uh, with their pants hanging off of them. And when it started changing, they started coming out there with the clothes two, three times too big and big t-shirts. And, you know, I, it just was a, it was a big change, you know. And that was in the early 90s that I could recall when it started surfacing. Well, really, they don't have morals and principles today. Anything goes, you know what I mean? Um, they're playing with kids. They, I mean, it's just, it's just a whole different thing. I, I tell people that recognize me, uh, man, go another direction. Don't do this. Were drugs a part of the picture? Huh? Like, were drugs a part of the picture when you guys were in your heyday? With me, yes. yes. And your girls? No, not with them. But you were using? I've always used, yeah. Yeah, and, and crack was, was a huge drug. No, no, that, that came later on in life. Okay. You know, I was brought up around, like I said, I was brought up around the game. Cocaine was acceptable back then. Yeah. You know, it was a pimp drug. It was a hustler drug, so that's how I got it. And then it elevated to different stuff along the line. Like I told you, I was down here for three years when I came home in, uh, I forget, what, the wine garden. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you got out of prison, they put you up in a yeah, housing? Yeah, they put me there. Yeah. So um, That happens a lot. Uh, yeah, they put me there, but I had a house in Encino. I had found two girls, and they got into this Internet stuff, and they got me rich. And they got a house in Encino, and it just took off from there. You know, this life has a lot of ups and downs, the good, the bad, and ugly. If you're going to get into it, be ready to accept everything that goes with it because it's not all peaches and cream. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, we had to eat, cut up a peanut butter and jelly sandwich just to eat, you know? I mean, you know, it's not what this cracked up to be. But the blessing part is to live to be our age, I think, you know, and live get through out it. The game, you know, successfully past 30, which most people don't, you know, coming up in the game, you know, because of all the trials and errors that you encounter and um sometimes it just be on people and not in them yeah you know what I mean? exactly so i'm talking about the ism you know what i mean the game so yeah a lot of them just have it on them and it's not in them so they just go through a fade a fast or something you know what i mean and it's not really who they are yeah it's not cut out for everybody yeah you know they just slide in the game off a of crack act on a banana pillin' and think they could do it you know which, which of, of all the, the women that you had work for you, which, which is your personal favorite? You know, with me, I have to love them all. You know, uh, a certain amount of love because that comes with the respect that they give me as a man. So I got to cherish them. And um, so all of them had a special part in my life. Like recently, uh, like this la last month, a friend of mine got killed and she was a working girl. Um, they found her, I got a call. We had, went, we had went to Las Vegas on a vacation, me and her. And she wanted to stay with me. And I said, no, you gotta go back to your family. And you know, you got a kid and stuff, you know. Um, um, 
she gave me a donation, but I didn't do anything with her as far as putting her out there or nothing. She did all this on her own, but I'm not turning down nothing as far as somebody giving me a gift. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a call like three Sundays ago, one or two Sundays, three Sundays ago, and they said um, uh, so and so was found in a motel room with her throat slashed. It really bothered me because when I put her on that plane to go back to Kansas City, she was like, no, I want to stay with you. And I'm trying to tell her I'm not with the game. I understand this is you, but this ain't me. You have a kid. So I just think, well, I'm not going to say that maybe if I would have kept her, this wouldn't have happened because when it's your time to die, it's your time to die. I just hated that it happened to her. Mm. It really affected me. Yeah, and I just had to take, sit back and uh, think, you know, thank God that I'm not in that lifestyle no more. You know, where I could have really pursued her in a way because she really wanted to be my girl doing that. I'm, I'm like, I'm 60 years old, swear I'm not doing that today. Do you think the, the relationship a woman has with her pimp is somehow trying to recreate the relationship she might have had with her father? They call you daddy. They look up to you. They some give you the money. Them, they, 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 they bring you. You may have be a father figure to some of them because, yeah, they was missing that in their life. Uh, you know, some of them and they wanted that mm -hmm. and uh, needed it. You know. And sometimes had abusive relationships with their fathers and they right. kind of end up with an abusive relationship again with a pimp. Uh, Not you guys necessarily, but in general. Well, like like I said, you got to be there everything. So that means a father figure because you're basically gliding these people along the way of what you want them or what you per, what you perceive you to be so you can want the best for them. So, yeah, kind of, sort of. All right, you guys. Very interesting talk. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for coming in and uh, sharing your, your experiences. Yeah, thank you for your Thanks. time. Thanks for All right. inviting us, yes. Thank you very much. Okay.